So let's talk about autoimmune. Okay. Let's talk about autoimmune. This is a female before I get busted for saying, you got a male on there. Because what I often do is I take these off like this. People go, that's not a female body. Oh, look at that. They did this new now. Wow. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Now, this is your kidneys. By the way, most people don't know that. Your kidneys sit right underneath your diaphragm, right? And the urethra goes down in here. That's why a lot of times you get like what feels like a UTI, but it's not a UTI because there's compression in there. And notice the diaphragm has two big holes up here. One holes for the uh, arteries and one holes for the esophagus. The esophagus here and the artery here. So from the stomach comes up, the stomach sits right about there. And uh, when you squat, those that hole gets pressurized and it moves pressure, air pressure from down there to above here. Let's take some of these muscles off. Okay, so now this is the funny thing about apps. You see how these both look the same? These adrenals, they both look the same, right? Like that, this looks like that. That's not the way it is in life. This one is round like a moon. This one is there. This is why anatomy apps and all the stuff that we're, we're going, if you haven't worked on a body, dissected a body, put your hands in a body on a regular basis, I mean like over and over again, you can't go buy an app and you can't go buy an anatomy book because it just isn't that way all the time. Organs can move around too, by the way. Okay, so then let's put the digestive system on here. Okay, here we go. You got your liver there. And let me take the diaphragm out here so you can see it better. I'm going to take all these out, take all these out, take all these out. So just so you can see it better. Okay, so this is your liver right here. And this is your gallbladder sitting right there. This is why when we do the gallbladder release, it's right up there on the right, on the, on the right side. Now, if your liver is necrotic, and this is one of the things that I kept saying, well, so if this liver here is necrotic, mean, what they'll do is they'll cut half of it, they'll exnate it, and it'll grow back. If you can grow a liver back, then why don't you grow a gallbladder back? Why don't you grow a kidney back? You see what I'm saying? Like the liver arguably is more complex than the kidney. The liver is your pharmacy. It's 400 known functions, 400,000 variations. It produces every, it monitors your blood. It keeps you alive. It's the one thing. You can go without a kidney. You can lose a kidney, but you can't lose a liver. So it's more important than the kidney. So if it grows back, why doesn't other ones grow back? And I have witnessed them growing back. Uh, things like gallbladder here. So in this particular case here, your liver is methylating, but here's your stomach. I'm going to show you this, the pathway here. So I'm going to get rid of this, liver gone. Okay, now there's your stomach. See your gallbladder there? See how it goes right into the stomach? Right in there. Now, the stomach, you see how we were saying earlier, how it goes up through that pipe, right in the diaphragm, it goes right up into the esophagus. So your stomach, you'll see the tissue changes here. The stomach rotates and churns, and it's exactly like what you would see if you were looking at uh, a dump truck. A dump truck turns and that stuff inside turns, all that cement turns. That's what your stomach does. So this is why uh, sometimes you'll feel like a choking sensation when you're, when you're doing a lot of organ, organ work. This thing here can rotate and it, it goes right up into, let's see here. I can't, can't I said the whole thing, but it goes right up into the neck, head and throat. Let me take these out, take this out, take this out, take this out, get rid of all these muscles, SCMs. And there's your thyroid, by the way. A lot of issues with the thyroid, you notice it looks like a, like, a, a, like a napkin. Well, also kind of looks like other things. So let's take that out. Okay, there you go. There's the, there's the esophagus coming up to there. And then what comes down to there is the tongue, actually, right down into the body. It goes all the way down your tongue. Actually, the fascial connections right to your toes. But it goes right into the heart, right into the stomach. So in the esophagus here, like if this, if your stomach is rotating you'll get a rotating up here. And sometimes you feel it like something gets caught or stuck in your throat. Okay, so we're going back down into the whole pathway here. So food comes down into here. Now it starts to churn. And there's different levels. There's a flap there that releases the acid. There's a there's the upper part of the stomach and lower part. Let's see if we can see that here. There you go. You see how you have a lower part and you have an upper part here. Now let's take some of these, whoops. And, and in here, so it comes down in here, the flap opens up, you get... You get all your acids in there. Now, this is why drinking alkaline water is not going to change your body pH. Your stomach is a pH of one acid. If you even put a drop of lime in 11.5 alkaline water, what happens to the water? It immediately loses its alkal its acidity. So the acidity, if you take, sorry, I mean a drop of alkaline water and put a drop of lime there, the acid, yeah, changes the acidity. It takes away the alkalinity right away. 
the acidity right away and the alkalinity it balances. So you're drinking alkaline water. It's not going to make it through your stomach, first of all. Okay, so in there, now we have this, what we call a greater momentum. Now, when you look at the greater momentum, by the way, and you look at it here, it looks like a nice organ, right? When you look at it on the body, it doesn't look like that. When you do a dissection, it looks like a scab that covers the organs. It's an integration. It's a way that the organs can get information like the small intestine into the blood. It's full of blood veins here. That's why one of the things when I stopped eating for 44 days, that's where it changed my belief system here. Okay, now from the stomach, you see tracks down here into the intestines. And here, let me move the, or can I do that? I'll move the large intestines for a minute there. See, right in there. So it comes out of the stomach, goes right down into the small intestines here. And this area here, it's just sitting as it as the food goes through and it and it and it's ready. And then it goes into this part, pre-intestine, sits there, and comes into the small intestines. Now, in these small intestines, this goes through this entire pathway. And see how this is broken up into sections. This controls each one of these areas controls a part of your skin. So if we isolate that, that's what it looks like. And let's even get rid of the hip here. I can't do, have to do it this way. So food starts to go through there. Now, if there is blockage anywhere in there, and I mean anywhere in there, you're going to start to have malabsorption. So because remember that greater momentum was all over here like this. And so if it, and each of these areas, the blood vessels from here go to a certain section of the body. And that's why you'll get like psoriasis or rosacea on areas of your body because it's all connected in here through the blood vessels. That's it, it's not it's not magic. It's literally there's blood vessels that are here that are different. Now I'm gonna go back to that greater momentum here for a second. I don't know if I can. No, I'm not gonna go back there. So the greater momentum, so it has it has this big circle thing around here that sits in the belly, and each part of that pulls blood and pulls nutrients into the blood through that adaptation and it goes to a part of the body. Now remember, every blood vein in your body eventually comes to the belly button. Go figure. That's where you got all your nutrients from when you're in the womb. Okay, so if we get rid of this. Gary, is that, is that why some people don't absorb like the vitamins and things from their food? Well, they don't absorb because this issue in here, this greater momentum here is meant to absorb. If this walls in here are plugged up from chemicals, which get goop and mucus and stuff like that. If you're taking glyphosate and you're taking pesticides and herbicides, okay, it's going to make it gunky. Pesticides or herbicides are going to make this permeable. So it means that that a food literally is leaching into the blood, like small amounts of food. Now that is what you're doing. Okay, and that's what's causing your autoimmune symptoms. So again, let's let's go back to to this. Let's take this out. I'm going to take that back and hide. Okay, so here you go. And now over here, this is where you're going to find the ileocinchal valve right here. And this is where the a large intestine starts. The large intestine goes up and over underneath the liver. And that's why when you have a lot of food in you, it puts pressure on the liver itself and on the stomach and your large intestine. In other words, you're full of shit. It comes all the way down in here. But this area here, see this area? Look at it. If it even gets remotely distorted, that area there, that's the area between the small and large intestine. That's what you get with the psoas release. You open that up because this, this is all thin tissue. It's like a sausage casing. If it crushes like this, then it can open up and then bacteria from the small intestine gets into the large intestine and it continues to eat. The small intestine has digestive bacteria. So it's breaking stuff down. So that's where you get diarrhea and stuff like that, okay? So let's put that back on. So this area here, when you are doing your psoas release, we're pulling up there and we're pulling up there. What that's doing is it's separating the small intestine and the large intestine so that flow can happen again. It's that blockage of flow that's causing you gas, bloating, and distension. And if you get pressure on here, if you get pressure down here, you're going to feel that pressure up here and you're going to have what we call depression so let me take the head here i'm going to take some muscles off okay let's go for our nervous system okay so let's take this here now let's put on your digestive system again and do this here okay i have this theory actually it's not a theory anymore i mean i've proved this out so many times things that look alike act alike right what does that look like does that look like that do they look the same? Yeah, yeah, because 
when a baby is being born, developing in the womb, there's these two nerve clusters. So what happens is here, hold on. You get this ball of plasma like this. You got a little nerve cluster that forms here, a little one that forms here, and then there's a line between them. And that's what it looks like for about six weeks when you look at it. But guess what's growing here? This is your muscle skeletal system. But what grows first is this is your brain. This is your small intestine. So they're connected. That connection doesn't go away. They're directly connected. So if you have a problem here, you automatically have a problem here. That's why feel-good hormones, the brain releases a boof like serotonin. Well, where does it release? In your small intestine, right? Okay, so let's get back to this. So if these guys are connected here, if this and this are still connected, and I put pressure here, pressure here, like that, guess where I'm going to feel it? I'm going to feel it up here. That's called depression. Again, super simple. That's why when we want to help people with depression, we clear out the GI tract. And, and in there, when you take the pressure off of there, you get serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin again. Does that make sense? Okay. So autoimmune. If you get blockages here, I'll take this off. So if you get blockages here and blockages here, you're going to have a processing issue. That means that food that comes down through here is going to spend too long in this system. When you have food in that system too long, you're going to get overgrowth and you're going to get bacteria. You're going to get SIBO. You're going to get all kinds of dysregulation because the food is literally rotting in there. It needs to flow through. Okay. Now, here's the crazy part about this. If you were to think about somebody when they sit, when they sit, they go like this. So guess what happens here? That all gets pinched. But when you squat, it opens this cavity up here when you squat. It opens this up, so it pushes the organs up, and they don't get pinched. It literally puts the organs up. It's like it's like the hands scoop under here and push the organs up so that the rectum comes down and the vagina comes down and the uterus. That means that you're actually putting those prolapses back in, back in place. So if you get a prolapse, start squatting, literally, every day. And it's really common to have disruption in through here and disruption through here. Now let's put some muscles back on her. And okay, here's your muscles, but muscles don't show you a lot. Let me show you some of the things. Like you got your stomach, remember right about here? Well, coming down here and coming down here, that's your stomach meridian. So when you sit here and this gets really tight in here, you're compressing your stomach meridian, which is power for the stomach and also a detox. What also comes through here is your spleen right through there. So if you're sitting here, it's affecting your immunity. This is why the psoas release and the lower reset work really good. If you're coming through here and through here, when this gets crushed, it starts to rotate inward and rotates towards the center. And what that does is right down here is your liver. So everybody who's angry has got a lot of inner thigh issues, right? So people are like, I got inner thigh issues. Does that mean I'm angry? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. 